stop shooting for 10 minutes. I just want to talk about G.I. Joe, that's it. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and it's another packed week. In fact, I just stood up from the Hasbro live stream for their new Star Wars reveals. I haven't even had time to process it yet, <laughs> but here we go. I'm just going to get into the toy news of the week. We're going to have a good old time, look at pictures of some toys, and, and you know, just yeah, relax. We're going to relax for about 15, 20 minutes. Well, I'll relax after this whole McFarlane Toys spawn Kickstarter thing is over. Like I said last week, I just can't keep up. There's too much going on. And it's just like Todd pops out every couple of days and just like, oh, you want some more stuff? You want some more stuff? Eh, eh. Even more crazy, this thing is over $2 million. In fact, I forgot to check a minute ago. I'm sure it's up to 2.25, which was the next goal. But let's talk about the other stuff he's revealed this week. First off, as soon as I posted last week, McFarlane came along and added more tiers to the Kickstarter. This was to allow people to buy multiples or two packs, three packs, six packs, however many you want. Then this week, at the two million mark, he came along and added a few more things. He replaced the plastic chain around the neck with a steel chain. Kind of like he did with the belt a couple weeks ago, but apparently it's different scales. I'm assuming the neck chain will be smaller than the chain around the waist. It makes sense. That's for every level, all figures. All figures will also get a new pair of fists, except for the right one has a hole in it to put the sword in so he can hold the sword. So it's not technically a fist, I guess. It's more like a closed grip hand but it's fisty enough. If your order, no matter what you order, contains one of the three packs that comes with the modern, the classic, and the artist proof, you'll get a gold plaque and your autograph will be signed in gold ink. He's taken the Austin Powers thing further than we expected. All the figures, all the packs will also get a new necro energy effect. You know where Spawn's using his power, it's green. It's not gonna be glowy, but it's gonna be a green energy type thing. Hell, by the time this is done, it may be glowy, we don't know. But if you get the three pack, you get three different necro energy effects with each figure. I don't know how it works. <laughs> and then at the 2.25 million mark, which again, I assume is already passed, it's already blown by that. Todd announced that the comics would have foil elements to them. And if you live through the 90s, you know what foil covers are. Along with that, you get a certificate of authenticity for the signature or the autograph, you know, to prove to people that, hey, this is signed by Todd. At the $3 million mark, Todd will personally hand deliver your whole order to your house. No, I made that up, but there for a second, it was like, yep, I believe that, well, that's where it's going. I believe we're down to just one more week on the Kickstarter, so if you want in, you better get in because it's funded. It's funded many times over. We already knew about the Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Decepticon clones Pounce and Wingspan, and we also knew that they were gonna be reused from older figures, but this week we get new promotional shots, including one of in the package. Mmm, package. That means they're closer to being acquired. That's why I like seeing in package shots. Of course, the faster they get here, the faster they can go into the stack of my other Transformers that are in cardboard carbonite, waiting for a proper space in a display. Dang you, G.I. Joe, jumping in line. Like I've said before, these are for people like me who weren't into Transformers at the time these originally came out. So um, I'll be happy to get the clones in one swoop. Haha, <laughs> Donabot joke. Especially because they're hard to get now because Pounce was in an Amazon pack of some kind, and Wingspan was in another Walgreens exclusive two pack with the Autobot clone? Ah, uh, marketing. Eh, what you gonna do? But that was then, this is now, and this is also a Target exclusive, so it doesn't even matter. I may never see it. So I'll just move on to the new promotional images for the Decepticon Seekers two pack of Thundercracker and Skywarp. I've probably also talked about this before, but I was gonna pass on the Earthrise Starscream. I thought, I have the Siege Starscream, which goes with the Siege Thundercracker and the Target Rainmakers and Redwing, and I think there's another couple of uses of that same mold until this two pack was revealed. Ooh, I can get all three of them and be done and just call the Rainmakers their Cybertron modes and be happy. I'd much rather pay for this than go for secondary market prices for that damn Siege Skywarp that came in some kind of Amazon pack. So it made me go grab the Earthrise Starscream. Still in the box, still in the pile, someday. But 
this mold looks so good that, yeah, I, I was eventually gonna crumble anyway. Plus, as much as I don't care about alt modes, the jets look so damn amazing that I may have to do some transforming when I finally open these things up. But again, target exclusive. <laughs> I feel like I can miss the clones if I absolutely have to, if I cannot track them down, but if I miss out on the Seekers, I don't know if my heart can take it. This week we got a better look at the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 movie Casey Jones and Raphael 2-pack. Well, a better look at the accessories. We've seen the pretty promotional shots for the figures themselves. This picture gives us a better idea of what it's actually loaded out with. And this set is packed. I mean... Is that a Jose Canseco bat? And you gotta know what a crumpet is. Raph even comes with his eh, eh, eh. It's such a scene specific thing that you automatically recognize. This is a Walmart exclusive and people have as much trouble with those as they do Target. My local area has always been good with exclusives. I'm in the home of Walmart essentially, but none of my local Walmarts carry NECA. So I have to find Casey somehow. Hopefully somebody will have an extra that they can, you know, send off to me. You know what that means. Ooh, leftovers. But flipping back to Target exclusive, here's a better look at the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate Metalhead. Look at the size of this thing. It's crazy. I mean, we knew it was going to be big from seeing it before, but actually having it right in front of you at a computer where you can zoom in on the pictures and stuff. I mean, he's not huge. He's about as big as Shredder, but when you go to a picture of Metalhead by himself, you think, oh, he's about the size of a turtle because he looks like a metal turtle. And then you flip to a picture that has other figures in it and you think, wow, oh, that's big. Back to a single picture. Oh, okay. You, you, it's like you immediately forget just how big it is until you see it again. <laughs> you know, like, ah, what are you guys looking at? Yeah. Comes with several sets of hands, including a optional vacuum and drill arm attachment. And then the chest also opens up for a blaster top attachment that I, I'm not quite sure how it fits in there, but it looks cool. I also love how much personality the opening and closing mouth gives this figure. At first I thought, oh, is that separate heads? And then I realized, no, it's just not, 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 not. Randy has said that this costs $30, which feels is a good deal and it will also go up for order on the target website when it releases but not for pre-order i'm just now realizing that the last four things i've talked about is exclusive to a certain store and i guess five if you count spawn and technically you can the super seven thundercats ultimates wave three the deadline for pre-orders there has been extended to May 15th. The set contains Slythe, Jaga, Chitara, and Captain Cracker. So if you were even considering this, there's a little extra time. And that's all I got to say about that. Hasbro sent out new promotional images for the Marvel Legends fan channel exclusive retro carded Mysterio. And it just gives us a better look at the figure, plus a little glimpse of it carded. And you know what I just said about carded figures? That means it's closer to my grubby mitts. I've really come around to the lighter colors on this since it's been revealed several months ago. Oh, three weeks ago? God dang. But comparing side to side with the original uh, Lizard Wave release, I think it is, the colors just pop a little bit more. And as muddy as the wash looks, I wish it was a little bit better applied it does add more depth to his you know cushion look and i absolutely love that the dome is foggier we don't see any kind of head underneath we can speculate that there may be something new under there but i'm i'm fairly sure it's going to be the same head but on the card is where the magic happens i mean sure i have no nostalgia for the 90s action figures so i'll probably get this look at it rip it open put it on the shelf but for that small moment that I'm looking at it, it'll be like, oh, this is, this is really cool. RIP! $20 comes out in October. Woohoo! It's been a while since we've talked about Plunderlings. We get an update in the form of factory samples, which is always cool to look at. I like seeing things unpainted. Paint can hide a lot, and you can look past it and see the actual engineering going on in a figure when you just see it in just white plastic or grayscale. Anyway, what I'm seeing with the Plunderlings is it, they look fantastic. Not only are they cute, they're functional because, uh, check this out, it doesn't get any more fushy than that. I mean, it can kick its own ass. I'm ready for these little guys to start terrorizing my shelves uh, right now, but it should be soon. This week, Storm Collectibles announced that Gotcha Man is in their... I feel like I mispronounced that and it... 
totally screwed up my train of thought. But they announced that uh, Battle of the Planets, how's that? I can say planet. That they'll be producing that license soon. But I'm hoping this is more Mortal Kombat and less Darkstalkers for Storm Collectibles. Meaning that I'd like to see them get started and then keep pumping them out until they're done. Not just announcing a license and then... Sometimes I think their eyes are bigger than their stomach. But... We can only wait and see. I didn't think we would see a Bandai SH figure art solicitation so close after Loki was revealed last week, but here is the SH figure arts Avengers Endgame Captain America Cap vs. Cap edition. This is his costume from when he went back in time to attain the scepter so they can bring it back. You know, you've seen the movie, and if not, spoilers for a year old movie. Looking at the figure, I think this may look better than it actually did in the movie. It's a little bit of diaper look and then you get up to the head and the, f well whatever they call it, the photo printing on the face, a little bit rough. But like I always say about this process, you're not meant to get macro all up close to it, right up on it. But I wouldn't use that image for promotional material. On the flip side though, they go ahead and show this now, you know what you're getting, and if they do improve it, yay, Bandai's a hero for listening to the customers and fixing their problem, you know? The set comes with three heads, including a normal unmasked, a gritting unmasked, and then a masked. So you went and spent all your money on action figures. There's two shield effects, one for when something's running into the shield, one for when he's throwing the shield, and they look good. I, I actually like these effects. And then several sets of hands, including one holding a compass. When I first saw the picture, I thought, oh, well, that's lost in the carpet, but they don't list it separately, so I assume it's one. Of, I think they say there's five lefts and seven rights. That has to be one of them. I'm not sure what's going on with the downed hood. It's not in all the pictures, and it's not listed anywhere, so I don't know if it's a separate piece. You just add on when you put on the unmasked head, or if it's magic or if they just forgot to list it, or it's listed with one of the head options. Who knows? The tricky part of all this is you have to get two in order to recreate that scene from the movie. And you can't even complete all that unless you get Loki for the scepter that Cap's holding here. But you know what it does include, though? That's America's ass. Releases in September overseas because it is a Soul Web exclusive, but Big Bad Toy Store already put it up for pre-order this morning, so it is coming through Bluefin channels. In the domestic market, it'll be $86 and releases in October. Another action figure revealed this week with not a lot of information behind it is Lady Death from Executive Replicas and Loose Collector. Yup, that Loose Collector. You know all those beautiful customs on eBay. That Loose Collector. Lady Death Universe on Facebook, which I'm assuming is the official Facebook page for Coffin Comics, announced this last week with a little tease. They said it would be six inches, contain 24 points of articulation, and then go up for sale in May. That's actually a lot of information, isn't it? I mean, not a lot of information. Here's all this information. And then we got this promotional image and seeing the overall figure, uh, yeah, I'm in. I mean, it's white, it's black, it could have been plain, but I love, love, love the subtle shading done here. It just makes it an aesthetically pleasing piece of plastic. I've already told Loose Collector that I'm first in line. Y'all all get behind me. Here's a couple of more magazine scans of the Medicom, Mafex, Star Wars... Ma <laughs> I think they like alliteration over there at Medicom. The Medicom, Mafex, Star Wars Mandalorian figure. And while it doesn't reveal anything new, we do get a better look at the overall figure itself. The proportions look amazing, the details accurate, and then the paint job just brings it all home. The child seems to be a statue, no articulation, but it is an accessory. It comes with the Mandalorian. And that's along with the knife, the pistol, the rifle, a line launching gauntlet that's swappable with the regular gauntlet, and then a beefy flame effect. And no, it doesn't seem to include the shoulder pad with the mudhorn sigil or the jetpack, but I'm going for overall accuracy here. I'm ending up with the figure arts because of all of its kick-ass accessories, and I'll get the Mafex because of how screen accurate it looks. Even though I guarantee, oh, it happens every time, I guarantee that the Mafex will be slightly large, the figure arts will be slightly small, and then the black series will be just right. Never fails. Not that I wasn't getting all three anyway, but you know. And then like I mentioned way back at the first, Hasbro had a live stream just a couple of hours ago revealing some new Star Wars Black Series figures. And I'm always down for some new Star Wars reveals. I haven't had quite enough time to process these yet, but uh, Monday, which is May the 4th, you know, Star Wars holiday, there will be more GameStop Gamer reveals. This has to be the official reveal for the Gamer vs. Shadow Stormtrooper, right? I mean, we've seen it up for pre-order on GameStop Ireland, just not in the US or anywhere else yet. And then they did announce that the Archive series will be coming back in 2021, 
with a fan vote on who we want to see in the archives line with updated photo reel. I didn't see it before I started recording this, but they said it would be on the Hasbro Pulse Instagram today. I'm recording this on Friday in case you didn't know. Then for figures themselves, there's a few Amazon exclusives. First, there is a carbonized Darth Vader. This is the 40th Darth Vader. We know it's a good figure. It's got the articulation. It's got the look. But the carbonized brings a metallic feel to it. And part of me thinks, why'd they go blue? But then another part of me thinks, oh, they went blue. It looks comic booky. I, am I justifying a purchase? Sure. I usually do, don't I? But at this point, we're all Vader junkies, right? I mean, how many Vaders do we have from several different companies? What's another one in a little bit of metallic blue? They also have a Han and Carbonite on 40th anniversary retro card. This is a good way to get this out to people who weren't able to get the San Diego Comic-Con Boba Fett exclusive. So if you missed out, this is it. But if you're just buying the retro card, like the sucker I am <laughs> you'll have to get this and put it up on the wall with the rest of them I didn't see the solicitation for this before but I, I the word on the streets is that it's $15 hopefully that's true because it's just a hunk of plastic there's no articulation it does include a stand where you can stand the slab up and down or you can make it float but the ones I want most is the two pack including Zuckus and Forlom on the Empire Strikes Back 40th anniversary card. One, it's those damn retro cards, I'm gonna need them. Two, they swap the names on the cards just like they did in the Kenner Vintage line. And then three, the paint jobs are actually different. And I didn't catch this at first. My live stream was a little bit wonky, but when I went back and started looking at the pictures, I was like, oh, Forlom doesn't have the rust. He's more of a metallic look. His eyes are a different color and then he's got the red dot in the middle, just like the vintage Kenner figure. And then for Zuckus, he has a lighter coat. His paints are a little bit lighter. So Kenner inspired paint jobs too, just like the Boba Fett from last year. So good. Mm. For general release, they revealed a two pack of Dagobah, Luke and Yoda. For Luke, it's an all new sculpt. He's muddy, he's got his jacket off. And we were warned that the single knees would be creeping their way into the line. We saw it with the Knight of Ren, We've seen it in a couple of other places. He can't kick his own ass, but it does look good in a neutral position. So I don't know where I stand here. It depends on the pose, I suppose. And then also single elbows. But if you look at the picture with the backpack, that is extended way past 90. So as long as the movement is there, I'm okay with it. And on the manufacturing side, that is less parts used. But I'm more interested in Yoda. They said this is a whole new sculpt. It's more screen accurate. It's more size accurate. And I am completely good with that. I don't know what the articulation looks like under that robe, but if it went smaller, I can't see them giving him more articulation this time around. It comes with a cane and then an alternate head with the eyes closed. Hey, hey, options are good, but Tricky, tricky, Hasbro. You couldn't have done this before you put them on the 40th card just now. How many releases did you get out of that first Yoda? Ooh, I'm on to you. I'm on to you. And then for mainline releases, we get a Kamino Clone Trooper. I'm loving this. I love clones, especially when they have individual markings. Every time I see something like this, I need to squat them up. But more interestingly, the new molded Stormtrooper. Another one of those sculpts that wasn't terrible. It was definitely passable, but they milked the hell out of that and it's good to finally get an updated version. The helmet definitely looks more accurate, and there's been changes on the body too, including what I think is single knees and single elbows. Did I point in the wrong direction on those? In the live stream, they mentioned that this is based on the Mandalorian, which was based on the Rogue One Stormtrooper. Now, I haven't done enough research to know the differences between movie to movie to movie for the Stormtroopers. To me, this looks almost as good as the new version of the Figuart Stormtrooper. And if I can get that, but at $20 a pop, I'll take this. And even with single elbows, it looks like it's holding the blaster fairly well. These two figures complete the assortment that was leaked a while back, and then most of that assortment was revealed at the first of April on several fan sites. So that case, whenever it goes up for pre-order, should be Stormtrooper times 2, a Snowspeeder Luke, Darth Vader from Empire Strikes Back, Tebow, Mandalorian Beskar armor, Admiral Akbar, and then the Kamino clone. Like I said, the Carbonized Vader and the Han and Carbonite and the Forlom Zuckus 2 pack is Amazon. They should be up anytime now. And then the Dagobah Luke and Yoda set are up for pre order on online sites right now. $40 at Dorkside Toys and ships in October.
And that's it for this week. I feel like I was rushing through it because I was, you know, live stream, taking pictures, looking at pictures, writing for the front page, and then jump directly into here. So I'm in, I'm in I haven't eaten today mode. <laughs> if you want a closer look at any of these pictures or more information, links to pre-orders, I'll have all that on the Foosh front page on Saturday at noon. But if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. Right now, Dorkside Toys is doing a weekly contest. Well, <laughs> we're working on it. We're a little bit behind but we'll swing back around. But if you're interested in free toys or seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I opened my Scoob figure Dino Mutt. This is, it's not articulated, but it's pretty good scale. Now I need a Mezco Blue Falcon. Yeah. <laughs>